Okay, here we are in Sprint 6 of the Hydra in a Box project. And today we are going to be demoing a few different things that we've been working on this week. First, we'll show you some of the work we've been doing on deploying the Hydra in a Box application to Amazon Web Services. Then we'll show you some work that we've done in the UI to surface background operations to provide more transparency for the, all the work that Hydra in a Box does to end users. Then we'll show you some user interface work that we've done to have a, a snazzy uh, save widget that tracks where you are in the page. And then lastly, we'll give you an update on where we are with uh, implementing IIIF support in Hydra in a Box. Okay, so without further ado, Aaron Fahey will be showing the work that we've been doing on AWS. Okay, so this week and for a few weeks before that, um, we've been working on building a template that AWS, um, under the AWS service called CloudFormation, uh, makes available to us. Um, and we've been putting that work in this Hibox AWS repo. Um, a quick walkthrough on the stack that we're building. Um, essentially what CloudFormation gives us is a way to templatize spinning up various pieces of the stack and then gives us a way to wrap around each of those individual pieces of the stack as one mega stack. Um, so the things we've been going on so far is uh, having a working Fedora 4 uh, deploy and one of the things that you might see in the cloud formation templates is it's incredibly verbose, but it's also um, complete. So the uh, Fedora deploy is um, a, is a working deploy. So is the Zookeeper in Solar deploys, which will build you a solar cloud. Um, Travis is in the works of trying to do some Travis deploy, which is um, uh, not yet completed, and the actual Hibox deploy yet is not yet depleted, uh, completed. Um, in the readmes, we um, in the readmes we have a way to um, should be able to with your own AWS credentials. Go ahead and spin up a Zookeeper Solar and therefore Solar Cloud and Fedora instance. Um, the work at doing Hibox right now is just tying all those pieces together so they know about one another. And uh, that's where we're at so far. Okay, great. Thank you, Aaron. So next we're going to switch over to Justin. And Justin is going to show us the work that he's done to wrap operations, we've been calling them, around background jobs to better surface in the user interface the work that Hydra in a Box does in the background. All right, it's all you, Justin. All right, are you able to see the screen? Looks great. Okay. Um, I've, I've taken my Sufia installation and up, uploaded a couple of batches of works here. Um, one of the problems we've had in the past with works is if one of one of the items in the batch fails, you get a very uh, confusing message that says the batch didn't work, but it doesn't tell you why it didn't work and it doesn't tell you which item in particular didn't work or if any of them did work. And so we're trying to combat that by providing uh, more clear uh, status messages. And so one of the way we, we've done that is by creating a table called operations that keeps track of any operations that might occur in the background. So here you can see I've done two batch creates and you're able to, uh, you can see that both batch creates are successful and you can drill into the batch create and see that there are actually three items in this batch and it is successful because all three items in the batch are successful. And if any of the, uh, items in the batch failed, then you'd get a, a failure message here. It would say that the whole batch has failed and two are successful, one has failed and any messages passed along with that you might want. Okay. 
Okay, great. All right, so next up, we're going to show you some of the user interface work that has gone on in Sufia to implement the, the user interface wireframes that were provided by the Sufia UI working group a few months ago. And this work in particular is going to be demoed by Mike Trebone. And he did a lot of work on this, which basically uh, the, the save form when you're creating a new work or editing a work can, can get long depending on how much metadata you're putting into it. So we wanted a form, a save form that could track where you are in the page so you don't lose that widget. So I'm gonna hand off to Mike. Thank you. Can everybody hear me and see my screen? Yep. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so one of the things in, in the previous version of Sophia was that as you work through uh, adding files and other me metadata and relationships and the visibility, um, the widget on the right-hand side was not always with you, right? So if you were working in metadata, you had to save before you could go over and handle, handle the visibility. So what we have now is a save visibility widget in the right-hand side that will stay with you as you move through the, the work tabs. And in addition, as you're working through the additional metadata, rather than having to scroll all the way back to the top as you work your way down through the metadata, you're able to just hop on over and click Save. And it's also important that um, we also still have, that with some of the longer visibility options, that the save visibility widget remains on the screen. And I think that some of the next steps for that widget will be for the tablet and phone. But that's about it. Great, thank you, Michael. The amazing thing with these demonstrations is that you can show something in about a minute that is actually hiding a lot of complexity and an awful lot of hard work. <laughs> so thank you for showing that off and for working on that feature. Okay, so the last thing we, we're gonna show you this week in Sprint 6 is Justin is gonna start sharing again. And he is gonna show some of the early IIIF work that we've been doing in Hydra in a Box. Right now, we are um, we're, we started with implementing the IIIF image API, and we have some work going right now to implement the IIIF presentation API. So uh, stay tuned for that. We hope to demo that in a coming sprint demo. All right, Justin, it's all you. We see you, but do not hear you. Um, so I've created a work, uh, and it contains a single file, which is a picture of a rhinoceros at a zoo. And uh, as you can see here, we have a, a link that says IIIF and opens it. And this is just here for the demo, showing that we can indeed um, open that image in the IIIF uh, image API. It has a uh, an identifier, and then the rotation and size and quality that you want to have. So this is currently at, at 640 pixels, but we could also just change it to, say, 240 pixels, and we get our image created for us on the fly. Um, it's cached, so after it's created one time, we'll just return the cached copy, and it shouldn't cause too much load on your server. So that is the uh, IIIF image API, and we're working on the IIIF presentation API for next time. All right, thank you, Justin. Was there anything else that folks thought of during the demos that they wanted to share uh, on the uh, share now with our audience? Okay, great. All right, well, thank you all for watching our demo and stay tuned for next week.